up, Edgy Gamers? Today's episode, we talk about getting to know your fellow human through game-based learning. So we have Peter from Yub and Numb Games, and we talk about his game Top Tail and how he created this game to foster an environment to get to know your fellow human. This is an excellent game for teachers like myself. I would love to be able to use this in my class as a maybe beginning of the year icebreaker to get to know some of my students, for my students to get to know each other as well. Also really great for friends or family, maybe to get to know them a little bit more. Um, it's really cool some of the stories that Peter shares on this episode and how his game created this really awesome environment and fun, safe space to get to know your uh, fellow human and the players you're playing with. So check out this episode today. Before we get into the episode, I do want to share, check out our newsletter, sign up below. That's the best way to stay up to date with Board Game with Education. So let's get into the episode. All right, welcome to another episode of Board Game with Education. Super excited to be joined by Peter Seiler. He is the founder of Yub Nub Games. I'll let him tell you what that means. Um, and also the designer of Top Tail, a game that was recently on Kickstarter. And we're excited to have that at Board Game with Education soon, too. Um, you'll be able to find it at other retail stores and on his site. Um, but Peter, could you introduce yourself a little bit and then share a little bit about your game, too? Sure, and thank you very much for having me. Uh, ever since you uh, nominated Top Tail as the Kickstarter of the month back in October, um, I've been super excited about you know your whole channel, what you do, and um, it, it's justification that this is the right audience. Uh, so anyhow, I, I'm Peter Seiler. I'm uh, by day I'm a motherboard engineer at uh, HP. So uh, you know, highly technical. But uh, at night, I've been doing this uh, board game design and publishing for about the last three years. Um, prior to HP, I was in the Marine Corps uh, for five years, um, deployed in 2005 and 2007. And uh, yeah, I went to school afterwards and started working at HP. And then um, I currently live in uh, Northern Colorado. That's so, awesome. Yeah, thanks. So uh, about the game, Top Tail, um, just real quick, it's, uh, uh, it's a party game, casual party game for two to 10 players, uh, plays in 30 minutes or more, and it's, I, I mark it as ages 10 and up, uh, but honestly, I've played it with kids as young as four. Um, they, you know, still get engaged, but if you have kids that are super young and no, no adults or no structure, it can get a little uh, willy-nilly so um, yeah but the game is all uh, it's all topics and each topic is meant to solicit uh, some sort of experience or story and so the game is all about sharing stories or experiences and then uh, in each round everybody responds to a topic and then everybody votes for their favorite response and so you're voting for the top tail and then the person with the most votes gets the card if there's a tie, then you have a tiebreaker round between the people that had the tie. Um, and then you vote again, and the person that wins the tiebreaker gets all the cards. So you, you play either to a certain number of cards or just for a certain duration. But uh, it's super casual, um, but it's focused on getting to know your fellow human. That's super awesome. And thank you for your service as well. Um, and I'm excited to talk about more about the game. And I think that's a really important topic for, for teachers. And that's why I, I highlighted it as something to check out for our community um, when it was a kick, on Kickstarter. Um, and I want to kind of define first before we jump into what getting to know you is all about and looking at that idea of getting to, to know your fellow human. Um, it's really uh, looking at game-based learning too. And that's the idea of using a game to learn about a topic and I think it's interesting that this game is being used to learn about your fellow human it's a game-based activity or game-based game to learn about the players of the game um, so can you share a little bit more about what was the idea of because I, I want to answer the question like what is what does it mean to get to know you and maybe if you can share a little bit about the idea of what inspired the game too sure so uh, the game kind of evolved over three years. Um, it started out as 
just a simple party game where it was a bunch of topics and people submitted res uh, responses to the topic and you vote on the favorite top or vote on the favorite response. So it was originally called Top That and uh, it was more generic. It was more, you know, any old topic. Um, and a as we did a bunch of play testing, I, I went to you know, local breweries, conventions, wherever I could get it play tested, um, we we found that uh, it really worked well when you had people sharing stories, and uh, especially you know if if you have a, a group of people that are sharing stories about um, both kind of lighter and darker topics, then it it really it's really interesting what happens to all the players. Um, you know, if you say you have a dark topic and somebody goes first and they share something that, you know, they maybe wouldn't be comfortable sharing under normal conversation circumstances, uh, everybody else kind of sees, hey, this person's sharing, you know, a little bit more about themselves. Mm. Let me go ahead and share something about myself that's a little bit, you know, behind the curtains. And so this kind of everybody builds off of each other while you're playing the game, both on the really positive topics and in the little darker topics. Um, and I, I can get into that a little bit more later, but um, it's really interesting how people feed on each other and people gain confidence hearing other people talk about, you know, experiences that maybe they don't typically share. Um, and that's why it really evolved into a game about getting to know your fellow human, uh, because you hear stories that people don't often tell, and and the topics are kind of designed around that, right? It's not, it's not you know topics that normally come up in conversation, um, and I stay away from anything political or you know religious or anything that would be. Uh, controversial mm. uh, because it's it's really focused on the person's background and um, I, I found that you know you take it into groups of strangers or coworkers or people that just casually know each other um, afterwards people usually develop a, a deeper respect and understanding for each other and and you know it could lead to so much more uh, positive outcomes in terms of people working better together and and just, uh, you know, un understanding is uh, really key because I, I think when people don't understand another person, that could lead to fear or it can mm -hmm. lead to uncertainty. And this really dispels, you know, uh, it dispels all that at the root, which is the misunderstanding of others. Right. And I wonder, so I want to kind of talk about I, I agree with you 100%. It's important to kind of get to know whoever we're, you know, interacting with as a human, especially our peers, our friends, our family, our coworkers, our students. So I, I want to ask, what is your experience with doing things like that or trying to get to know someone that's not a game-based activity or game-based game, and then using your game or using a game to create a more enriching I guess a enriching experience to foster that. Sure. So um, I, I guess I'll relate some experience from my day job. So I'm a, you know, a computer engineer and um, we've attempted to do like team building exercises. And really it's just trying to get people away from work topics, you know, mm. going, going to uh, uh, going out for drinks after work or, um, doing some sort of event, like our team went curling once. Okay. Um, <laughs> so just random things that are, are kind of designated as team builders. Um, but you, you might kind of join in on a collaborative effort like that or, or get into a casual setting. Um, but it doesn't really do much to get, you know, get an understanding of what your teammates are all about because mm -hmm. people can hide themselves really easily um, in those types of settings, right? You can, you, you can act all casual, you know, during a team event and uh, still be hiding a lot about your personality or about your, your background. And uh, 
if you bring top tail into the mix, you can't hide. Or, I mean, you you can, you know, you can either not answer a topic or you can um, choose to do something that's, you know, not too controversial. Mm, um, right. But but back to what I was saying before, the game builds on each other or people build on each other's responses. Um, it, it's just less of an opportunity to hide who you are and it exposes everybody, I guess. And I, I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> it's not it's not that people are going to learn your deepest and darkest secrets. It's that people are going to learn where you came from and you know what you've gone through in your life and it, it's totally up to the individual what they share right right yeah i mean i think about um games similar to this one maybe not i mean not even close to the same in some regards but it uses that idea of creating opportunities for you to uh be creative i'm thinking of like um I don't know. I, I played cards against humanity. That's it. I don't know. That's not for everyone. I played it like, you know, in college, but that it gives you that opportunity to be creative and be funny because it provides that structure for you. And I seem, I haven't played top tail and I'm excited for when it does come to check it out. It seems like top tail has that in place, but to share experiences is that, I don't know if I'm kind of saying that right or not. No, you're, I, I think you're right on the money. So I had one reviewer, um, had, the quote was, uh, um, if you like apples to apples, but think cards against humanity is too risque, then top tail will provide a satisfactory middle ground. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> he's comparing it to two very popular games. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like an in-between. And uh, that was uh, Vincent from uh, Dad's Gaming Addiction. Okay. Um, but I I think different games try to have some sort of element of, uh, you know, people showing their darker side or showing who they really are, but not really, I don't know. It, it, <laughs> to me, you get a sense of the person, but you don't get to know the person, mm. right? Um and so there's there's a bunch of like conversation games um you know where it's topics where you know what's your favorite color or you know who'd you go on your first date with that kind of thing um there's a ton of those conversation games and that's one of the reasons why i put this as a two to ten player um with two players it's not necessarily about topping the other person's response um it's more you know, just getting to know each other one-on-one as a conversation. And this is, you know, essentially a conversation starter. Um, Is it a good good first date, (laughs) a good first date game? Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, for instance, uh, you know, social engineers would love this game. So you can find out so much about a person from the backstory that they tell before they pitch a story Mm. so a a lot of times when you're playing the game um to really give a complete response somebody has to give some backstory they'll say i grew up in cincinnati i had three brothers you know (laughs) uh, my dog's name was skip you know it (laughs) it's like they tell you uh a good chunk of information that you wouldn't otherwise know so that the story becomes more relevant or, or, you know, it makes more sense. Um, so it's, it's really interesting how even hearing just two, three stories from each person, even if you just play a few topics, um, you can really get to know somebody, uh, you know, with, with all the backstory information. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's kind of like uh, I'm just thinking about when I just mentioned Cards Against Humanity. I I had to frame that that statement with by giving a little bit of backstory. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I know you went to college. <laughs> yeah. I know that you you uh, maybe played Cards Against Humanity, but you're not so happy about it these days. I don't right. know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. It's interesting. Cool. So do you see any? Um, potential drawbacks to using games like this or any challenges to using a game for 
um, getting to know someone? Sure. So the challenge I've found with this game is um, some people are really hesitant to let others in and to share about themselves. And so um, breaking through that barrier, I think, is, is always going to be a challenge for certain people. Um, really overt or really um, outgoing people uh, really love this game, especially people that have a lot of history, have a lot of experiences to pull off of. Right. They love this game. But if if you're dealing with somebody that doesn't have a lot of experiences or maybe they, they're not comfortable with their uh, the other players, they may be a little bit more reserved. And so that's always going to be a challenge. Um, and remind me of the first part of that question. Just any challenges or drawbacks. So I think you kind of answered it as far as like challenges you have less reserved or more reserved people wanting to get involved. Um, so I wonder how do you in the game, how would you encourage that person or does the game have some structure in place to encourage someone who is more reserved or less outgoing to kind of share more? I guess it, maybe you mentioned the, the building on other players is that have you seen that kind of happen in games with less reserved players who kind of come out and start sharing a little bit more absolutely um and you answered the question but <laughs> uh, to build on that there's no structured way to get somebody to um, you know talk about themselves it's more in the social aspect of playing the game where you know you you hear other people are telling stories about themselves and so it encourage it, it encourages each individual to share a piece of themselves for the sake of playing the game and really you could play the game without voting you could play mm -hmm. the game without points um and it still has a lot of the same results the fact that you're playing with voting and you're playing with the points is just a little extra incentive for people to open up because right it's for the sake of the game right it's, yeah yeah it, it's not like you're just putting yourself out there for nothing it's to win the game even though at the end you don't really care <laughs> right no that's awesome i mean it's it's something that we talk about a bit is the magic circle right you're you're the magic circle in a game is like an agreement that you have with other players in the game and you want to all agree to try to win the game and if those points are there you're all agreeing to you know, open up and share more, or at least try to score points. And that seems like the game incentivizes opening up to do that. Um, I wonder maybe if you could share share a prompt from the game and I will try to answer it. Oh, sure. <laughs> and then maybe we can go into the last couple questions and that's going to be how do you approach less comfortable topics? But maybe okay. you can share a prompt just to kind of give us an example. Sure. So uh, here's the game. And it's a, a magnetic flat box. Oh, cool. So um, instructions are in there. Oops. And then a bunch of cards. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> um, and it, this isn't the final box. This is just a, a physical proof before we went into production. Okay. Um, but it's it's pretty close. Awesome. All right. So I'll just pick a card. OK. Uh, so the card is worst experience traveling. And each card has a. A little caption at the bottom it's just meant to spark ideas or maybe get a chuckle out of people um, but this one says combat deployments don't count and okay. it's it's kind of saying you know this is more of a personal or business travel kind of thing okay um worst travel experience i mean <laughs> this one's kind of I, I don't know it's kind of gross but i'm going to try to make it not too gross <laughs> since other people will be watching this um, so my wife and I, we, before we got married, we went on a trip to, um, um, what's the country? Oh my gosh, the Philippines. And we had taken a kayak to another Island. And on the way back, I had an issue where I needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and so instead of being able to make it to the Island, I had to go on the kayak <laughs> And so I, she didn't know I was like, we were driving, like rowing the kayak back and I was playing music. I was jamming out and singing. And then all of a sudden I got quiet. And I guess she told me later, she's like, I don't know. I didn't know what was wrong. And you kind of just got quiet. 
And so before we even got to the ocean, I had to jump out of the kayak because I wanted to make sure I could, you know, clean up before I get to the ocean. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see everyone that kind of doesn't know me too well from board game with education now knows a little bit more about me. Um, a lot of friends and family have heard that story, but yeah. Cool. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's a cool experience of the game. Um, do you want to share one too? Uh, sure. Mine's not nearly as uh, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> um, so my wife and I, uh, back when we were still engaged, uh, we did this trip to Florida and it was a cruise to Bahamas and also, also some time in uh, Orlando. Um, and as part of the whole package, like they get you to go on a timeshare tour. Okay. And we, we had no idea what timeshares were or any of that. But um, so we go do this tour so that we fulfill the requirement. And uh, they take us on the tour, all the houses. They say, yeah, that's nice. Um, and then they get us into this room at the end and say, okay, what, what's it going to take to get you into a contract? And we tried to explain to them that we were poor college students, you know, <laughs> absolutely no extra money to spend on this kind of stuff. Uh, but they kept us in there for two hours oh, trying to get us to sign contracts. And it was just one let me get my manager, let me get my manager, mm. you know, this is the best we have to offer. And we told them up front, we weren't going to do it. And it was just, it, oh, it wasted the whole day and, and just spoiled the whole day. So that, yeah. 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 Those timeshare people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So, so I, I guess, I think you won that round. By <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll, you can vote in the comments, I guess. <laughs> See who, who wins the top tail there. Um, so I wonder, those are, that's a pretty easy topic. You might have someone open up about something that's a bit uncomfortable or more, I guess, uh, serious. How would you approach or how do those things get approached in the game? Like what are some, maybe you mentioned the the bottom part on the, the card that kind of helps to lighten the mood sometimes. Um, but what yeah. have you seen with people playing the game and how, less comfortable topics are approached? Good question. So uh, first up, I tried to balance the game as best as I could. Um, probably 60% of the topics are fairly light. Uh, maybe another 20% are kind of middle ground and then 20% are the heavier topics, right? So I extremely favor the lighter hearted topics because the worst thing that can happen is you play a game and you only play six cards and all of those cards are dark and you know yeah not topics that people are usually comfortable sharing you usually have to primer that with some lighter topics or some in-between topics so it's it's luck of the draw in the end but um i i try to get people to get more comfortable opening up about darker topics by first opening up about lighter topics and kind of gradually working them, working them into it. Uh, now that again, it still happens where the first card you draw is mm. you know, something a little darker, but um, I think balancing the game's topics is one way I address it. Um, in the rules, it states clearly that if you're uncomfortable, uh, answering a topic you can pass so um, okay. or if you just don't have a good response or if you don't think you're going to win win the round um, everybody can always pass and okay. when you pass uh, it just means that you don't get to uh, have your response voted on right there's mm -hmm. nothing to vote on right um, so you forfeit the round but i think it, you know, it's it's easy for people to pass because usually you're not getting super competitive about the game. So people have an easy out. Mm. Um, but at the same time, people don't like to pass. People like to be involved in the game. And so for the sake of playing a game, you know, they'll, they'll submit some sort of response. Right. Um, and then another aspect is that uh, people are encouraged to be honest. Um, but it's not anywhere written in the rules that you have to be honest. And so, <laughs> you know, worst case scenario, you make something up or you tell somebody else's story. Mm. You, you relate an experience that happened to your 
sibling or to okay. an acquaintance or a friend. Yeah, so. awesome. So I can go back to my story and say it was all made up. It was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so it, sorry, one more thing on that. So uh, you're right. The the caption at the bottom is meant to make the topic seem a little less scary. Um, so I was just reading through some of them and uh, about 10 cards in, I got to this one. Uh, but it's the time you thought you would die. And the caption is, or perhaps did you die? Are you dead? Quick, check for a pulse. Awesome. And so, you know, the caption is meant to be lighthearted or spark ideas. Um, but some people take this one really hard. Like mm. if, if they themselves, you know, saw the light at the end of the tunnel, but came back or they know somebody that, you know, had that experience that's really close to them, uh, it, it can hit them pretty hard. And so I think while people are thinking of responses, when they hear everybody else share their story, um, that might get them a little bit more confident in sharing their story. Yeah. Uh, but right. but again, if, if you draw this one first or, you know, some of the heavier ones, it can shut people down, but hopefully it's only temporary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have other light, lighthearted cards to kind of help, I guess, lubricate that I use that term because <laughs> of board games, social right. lubricant to kind of help the, the conversation and the game experience. Yep. Cool. So do you have any thing else to share before we head into our game or maybe some last words for anyone that's looking at top tail? Um, yeah, so there, there's just a, a few experiences, examples of playing the game I wanted to share. Okay. Um, so one was with family. We were playing uh, Top Tail at, after Thanksgiving, and there was probably, oh man, about 12 of us. Um, so my wife's side of the family, big, big side of the family. But um, we played Top Tail for about two hours, and one thing that really stood out about that game was um, uh, one of my wife's nephews is autistic. Mm. Uh, at the time, he was probably 14 years old or so. Um, you know, being that we played two hours, we covered a ton of topics. But one of the topics that stood out in my mind was uh, your worst bully experience. And whether that's you as a bully or, or having somebody bully you. Um, and, uh, he shared that he had this bully and, you know, he, he used words like, I seriously wanted to kill him. Mm. And, um, he, he ended the story saying, you know, that he's not, he's not a bully and he doesn't want to be mean to this other person. And he actually confronted this, this bully and told him essentially, you're not worth it. I, mm -hmm. I'm above this. And uh, after the game, um, his grandma, who's, who's his guardian, uh, she came up to me and said, you know, he opened up more than he's ever opened up in therapy or with me or anywhere. And she thanked me uh, for the whole experience. And so it's it's experiences like that that have really fueled my passion for developing and publishing this game yeah that's a really cool story and i think a lot of uh teachers can relate to that that have used games in their classroom because you do see certain sides of people that you don't normally see when we play games especially i mean your game has that opportunity to allow people to share experiences that they might not normally share yeah that's really awesome yeah and that that's one of the darker topics so um, not to scare anybody. I, I've said a lot that might scare people, but really it's it's a lighthearted, casual game. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I think, I mean, hopefully at least with our, our travel experiences, that can kind of shed some light on how, how lighthearted it can be. Cool. Yep. Um, so any last words before we head into our game? Maybe some final tips or uh, reasons why you should check out Top Tail? Sure. Um, so first, there's a few different ways to try the game before you buy it. Um, I'm all about, you know, putting out content so that people can have an informed decision. Um, there's a print and play. So it's on my website, yubnubgames.com. 
Um, there's a mobile app and the mobile app is still kind of in the early stages of development, but it, it's, uh, it's going through some facelifts right now. Um, but it's available on both Amazon or not Amazon, on Google Play <laughs> for Android and for iPhones. Oh, cool. Um, but it's, you know, a very awesome. simple app. Uh, it's got 25 card topics so that you can get through a game or two and understand whether you like it or not. Mm. Um, and it's also an alternative. Once you have the physical game, uh, you can, you know, play Top Tail anywhere you go. And there's actually in each physical game, there's a unlock code. Oh, cool. So it's a one-time code. Uh, you'll be able to create an account and then unlock those cards that you purchase physically in the mobile yeah. app. So you oh, have awesome. it wherever you go. Yeah. Um, and so free ways to try before you buy. There's also Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. Mm. <laughs> um, so I encourage people to try it. You know, it's it's not for everybody, but if if it is something that sounds really interesting for you, um, I, I did the Kickstarter. I'm fulfilling orders hopefully in August of this year. It's in production currently. Uh, after that, I'm going to have it available on uh, Board Gaming with Education's website, and uh, hopefully we can work out some sort of uh, promo from there. Yeah, awesome. I didn't realize I, you have the app, and now I think I might have to try it out. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. Yeah. They at least try it out before it comes. Cool. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna move into our game, and I mentioned we're gonna play five second rule. I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, so we're gonna play five second rule. You essentially have to name three items in the category before time runs out. Animals. Uh, lion, tiger, bear. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. And the next category. Things you find outside. Uh, fish, trees, birds. <laughs> <laughs> so you got one. You got one so far. In the next category, electronic devices. Uh, phone, computer, monitor. Got that one. Got two. <laughs> In the next category, insects. Uh, bee, uh, ant, caterpillar. Ooh, this is barely. <laughs> Not sure if they're... Yeah, I don't think the caterpillar is insect. <laughs> uh, we'll count it. We'll count it. You name three. You name three things. Okay. Ad adjacent related category. So that's three, right? And the next yeah. one, <laughs> superheroes. Oh, uh, Superman, Batman, Aquaman. Oh no, I think you got it, but it for some reason it went to the next one. All right. And the next one, board games. Oh, uh, Sellers of Catan, Top Tail, Scythe. Oh, got it. Awesome. So I think you have five? Five, I would say. We had five so. out of six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, Peter, thank you again so much for coming on the show. Uh, if anyone wanted to keep up with you or keep up with Top Tail, where might they do that? Sure. So uh, my website has a way to subscribe uh, for my newsletter. I don't spam people. I, I actually only been sending like one email per quarter so um, if you want to subscribe i'll just announce key events and any opportunities like if i'm doing promotional sales or whatnot um, also the my social media accounts uh so yub nub games on facebook twitter and instagram that's where i update the community a little bit more regularly so uh, follow along on any of those uh for updates Awesome. So thank you so much. And I'm excited to, to check out Top Tail, maybe check out the app here soon. Awesome. Yeah. And again, the app's still fresh, um, still working out bugs. So let me know if you have any issues and uh, anybody can reach out to me, um, Peter at yubnubgames.com with any questions or, or whatever. Awesome. Thank you. All right, thanks.